most drummers out there have some degree of difficulty tuning their drums in a way that makes them really happy. In fact, most drummers don't even know where to start when they sit down at their drums. Today, we're gonna to show you what to listen for and more importantly, what not to worry about when it comes to getting a drum in tune with itself. Just to get out ahead of it real quick here, this is not about tuning the drum for a certain sound or to a certain pitch or to any certain intervals. We wanna get real specific about where exactly we're starting when we think the drum's out of tune and we wanna fix that. What we're gonna be addressing today is overtones and specifically how to listen to each lug on your drum to figure out if some are high, if some are low, and which ones need to get adjusted. First, let's hear what this drum sounds like today. This drum sounds great as is. However, we know because we set it up this way that the lugs are not all tuned to the same pitch and that's what we're gonna go after. You may have heard a term used that is called clearing the head. And what that means is getting all of the tension rods to the same pitch so that the drum is resonating at a single pitch across the entire head. This is gonna afford us an even sounding instrument. It's gonna get us away from hearing wobbly noise in the snare wires when we hit the tom. It's gonna be a better sound overall, but how do we get there? Today, this drum has been tuned to where a couple of the lugs are out from the rest of them. Let's take a close look at a couple of adjacent lugs on the drum that are gonna be exhibiting different pitches. By placing my index finger in the center of the drum very, very gently, it's giving me a more pronounced overtone at the edge and quieting down the fundamental just a little bit, which makes it easier to hear. If you want to employ this method, which we do a lot here, make sure that you don't press on the center of the drum with any kind of force because it will push the pitch of everything out. If you're enjoying what we're doing here today, please follow the link below to the Patreon. There's lots of extra content over there, great community. Go over there, check it out, and see if there's a spot for you. In this next demonstration, we wanna show you both the overtones that we're listening to and present it in a way where it's gonna be really clear what part of this sound it is that we are listening for. More often than not, when we hear one lug out of tune, there's at least one more that also is, and oftentimes it's the lug opposite the one that we're struggling with. Next, we need to identify whether the offending lug is higher or lower than it needs to be. In this case, the lug that's giving us trouble is lower than the others. And if this is difficult for you to hear, don't be afraid, don't get super concerned. This is all a part of ear training. And if this is something that you struggle with, something that I often recommend people do is either find access to a keyboard, a piano, or maybe a free piano app for your phone where you can practice pitch matching with your voice between notes and start to get a sense of what higher and lower feels like. If the journey we're on today is interesting to you and you'd like to hear it on a snare drum, we're considering doing this as well, please let us know in the comments. Based on the investigative work that we've done, we now know that the troublesome lug is lower than we need it to be, and we also know that the opposing lug is similarly out of tune and lower. What this means for us is that we want to raise both of these lugs, leave the rest of them alone, until we are getting an even sound out of the rest of the drum. 
We're using two keys today, as we often do here, to make sure that we are applying tension simultaneously to both sides of the drum to make sure that we stay centered and that we're also getting the same amount of increase as we go. Okay, let's hear the two lugs in question one more time. All right, we've arrived. The head is in tune with itself. All of the lugs are matching up. However, now we're in a much higher range than we were when we started, which just goes to show you, as we say a lot around here, every lug affects every other one. And all of the rest of them are higher now too, because these tensions are going in every direction each time that we adjust one of them. If you like where we're headed with this so far, please let us know by liking, commenting, subscribing, and telling us your experiences with trying to figure out just what's going on when you're tuning your drums. It's easy to think that each tension rod is similar to a tuner on a guitar, where it's discrete and separated and each one has its own pitch that's in a vacuum, which is entirely incorrect for the behavior of a drum head. Every time we adjust one thing, we're changing everything else, so we do have to keep that in mind, not just if we're trying to clear a head, but also if we're aiming for a certain range. With a drum that was starting as high as we were before, another option would have been to tune the whole drum down first before working on clearing the head so that if we got to this range, we wouldn't now have to reduce tension on the whole drum to get back down there and possibly run into other tuning issues. Now for a few things to keep in mind as you're working through learning how to do this. Pitfall number one, all of this stuff is resonating to some degree, so there is a possibility of things starting to get confused between the cymbals or other drums that might be nearby the one that you're tuning. So generally speaking, if you're gonna practice this and spend time on it, it might be worth taking the drum you're working on away from the rest of them to avoid confusion. Number two, it is really worth taking stock of the state of the heads that you're trying to tune. If they are real beat up, if they are real stretched out, if they had been unevenly stretched out because one side of the drum was very tight for a long time, all of this is going to be significantly harder. So you can practice on those and it might be worth doing, but there is a threshold where replacing the head is going to be the right choice. Number three, don't forget to keep in mind that little changes can often create a big effect in terms of the pitch of a location on the head or the pitch of the entire drum. So spend time with the drum key and start to understand just how much of an effect an eighth of a turn, a quarter of a turn, an entire turn is gonna have on the drum so that we don't overshoot and end up missing what we're aiming for. It is always easier to move in small increments upward than to overshoot, have to go back down, readjust, and get caught in this crazy pendulum where you don't know even what you're aiming for anymore. Lastly, it's worth mentioning that the range that the drum you're working with is tuned in is going to drastically affect how easy it is to hear the overtones, how much fundamental is present, and how much you're going to notice changes as you're making them. This kind of thing is pretty tricky on a very low tuned floor tom, and oftentimes we don't sweat that so much because the sound is already pretty good, but trying it on a snare drum or taking a small tom and pitching it up for practice, definitely worth doing. If you've gotten to this point and this is absolutely a struggle, this isn't making sense or it's not working for you on your drum, try this. Take all the tension off of the head that you're working on and start from scratch because every time we do this, it's a slightly different jigsaw puzzle and we do need as much experience as we can possibly get to make sure that we can make the adjustments that we need. If you're having a really hard time, starting over is the way to go. A really big thing that we want you to take away from this, especially if this is a struggle for you and continues to be even after you've watched what we did today, is that this is a process. It takes a while to train your ears, the same as it takes a while to train your hands through a new rudiment, a new groove, a new tempo, anything like that. Perfect practice gets good results. 
This is a really hard thing to practice perfectly because there's so many variables. So anything we do with this jigsaw puzzle that is tuning is going to improve. And over time, it will get easier. We promise it takes a while. It's not easy for everybody. Some people find it easier. Don't be afraid if this is really, really scary, really spooky, really challenging. It's really worth it in the end. Our ears are our most valuable asset when we play an instrument, and despite the fact that there's lots of devices out there that can try to make this easier for us, honestly, I enjoy the process of trying to figure out what's going on with an instrument because then at the end of the day, when I get the sound I'm looking for, I feel like I achieved something rather than just like reaching for a graphing calculator to do simple addition, you know?